Hi, my name is Dan Nigro, Product Marketing Manager for Control Components at Omron Automation and Safety. Today's video, we are going to focus on the advanced setup of the H7CXN multifunction counter. Before we begin programming the H7CXN multifunction counter, let's review some of the key features that it has to offer. First, the easy to read process value display. If you have the four digit model, the process value will be 12 millimeters high. If you have the six digit model, the process value will be 10 millimeters high. As far as programming the unit, very easy to program, can be programmed through the front panel as we will do today. A nice feature that the H7CX-N has to offer that many of our competitors don't offer is a tricolor display. And it is programmable and it will let you program the counter to display a certain color, that color being red, green, or orange, to show the current status of the counter. Next, a universal input. Our H7CXN counter will accept an MPN or a PMP input. From an output perspective, depending on the part number, we do offer a contact output and or a transistor output. Seeing how the H7CX-N is mounted on the front of, a, of an electrical panel, we do offer key protection. Here, we offer seven different levels. So therefore, depending on your application, it will allow you to protect the counter according to your application, which will also help you avoid any disturbances. Last but not least, the H7CX-N features a NEMA 4X front or an IP66 front protection. We do have accessories available that can cover the H7CX-N for those application requiring washdown. Please consult the data sheet. Before we begin programming, one thing I'd like for you to keep in mind that there are 15 parameters which may or may not be needed to be set up before you begin your application. Please review the factory default parameters which are located in the H7CX-N datasheet as you may not need to change them for your application, therefore making your program easier. Please review the factory default parameters as you may not need to change them for your application. Now that we've just finished reviewing the key features of the H7CXN, let us proceed with programming the H7CXN. But before we do, we have to make sure that it is wired correctly. So please double check your wiring. Once that's completed, then power up the unit. Once you power up the unit, you will notice that the process value is set at zero to red, the set value is zero and green, and your output light is on. And that's okay, because our next step, which we're gonna do, is the parameter setup. By doing that, we're gonna press the mode key first and the number one key. This brings us into a function for the parameter setup, because we're gonna do a total and preset function, we need to change this. So to do that, we're going to press the number one key. So now it's T, C, N, T for totalizer. We are now going to press the mode key first and then the number one key. And that brings us back to our original screen. Now to set up the functionality of the counter, we are going to press the mode key and hold it for three seconds. All right, so now what this has done, it has brought us into the input mode. And CNTM is for counting mode, and we are going to count up. So we're going to go from whatever our, from zero to whatever our predetermined number is going to be at the, at the end. So we're going to keep that where it's at. And by the way, that is the factory default. Next, we're going to set the output mode. There's 11 to choose from. So we're going to keep it at the factory default of N. 
and this allows our instantaneous contacts to transfer right away. The next mode is CNTS. This is the counting speed. There's two speeds to choose from. There's 30 hertz and 5 kilohertz. Because we are going to be using a push button for our input, we're going to keep it at 30 hertz. And now we're going to advance to the next mode. IFLT, this stands for Reset Input Signal. As we had done with the counting speed, there's two speeds to choose from here. There's 20 milliseconds or 1 millisecond. For an application like we are going to do, using a basic switch, a limit switch or a push button, we could keep it at 20 milliseconds. You would use the 1 millisecond for very high input let us now proceed to the next mode. DP, decimal point position. This function allows you to determine how many numbers should be placed after the decimal. There's four selectable options and those four selectable options can be done by pressing the number one key. As you can see the decimal will move its place and so now you have your four options. Uh, we are going to work with whole numbers, so therefore we will keep it at the factory default without any decimal. So next, we're going to press the mode key, which take us, takes us to the prescale value. You would use this function as a way of scaling an input to equal a certain amount of counts on the display. A typical application would be using an encoder and needing to scale the display to read the number of feet or meters traveled. Based on our advanced setup, uh, we will not be using this function, so therefore we will keep it at the factory default of 1,000. You would also keep it at the factory default of 1,000 if you had a proximity and or photoelectric sensor uh, hooked up to the H7CX-N counter. So we are going to press the mode key and advance to IMOD. This is the input mode. At this level, we are going to determine if we are using an MPN input or a PMP input. Because we are using a switch, we will keep it in the MPN input. This is the factory default. Next is, is the display color. As I mentioned early on in the video, in the key features about the H7CX-N, we have the capability of having our display change color. The three colors we could change from are red, green, and orange. Uh, by using that color combination, that will give us roughly nine opportunities to program into the H7CX-N. And the reason why one would use this is for quick visualization of the process. For our application, we're going to keep it at the factory default of red. And continue on. By pressing the mode key, we have now advanced to the SL-H, which sets the value for the upper limit. This is a nice function, as it prohibits the set point uh, to become greater than the value needed. So in other words, what we're doing here is we're setting a ceiling. So um, what we could do here is, for example, if our set point was uh, 25 or 50 or let's say 100 or 500, we could set the SL-H equal to that number, so then we will not get any false uh, numbering or false counts um, from the application. It would stop at that number. So we are going to keep it at the factory default and continue on to the key protect menu. The key protect menu has seven different levels that you can choose from depending on your application. 
Uh, I do recommend that when you do go to set your key protect level that you do have the H7CX-N datasheet readily available. Um, so you understand which parameters will be available and which parameters will not be available. So that is the setup of the H7CX-N. So we are going to press the mode key and go back to our, our main screen. Press and hold the mode key for three seconds. All right, so now we're back to the main screen. As you can see, we have zero process value, zero set value, and we have the output light on. So what we are going to do, we are going to put the process value at zero, and the set value we are going to place at 25. If you notice, the output light's still on, and that's fine. We will clear it, and the only way you can clear that output light when you are programming the H7CX-N is when you have a set value in. And now you can hit the reset. So now you cleared it out. So now we're ready to go. I'm going to push my A22R push button 25 times. and the output light comes on. Now, because we are doing a totalizer, I'm going to press the mode key, and now we can see the total count of 25. I'm going to press the mode key again, and reset it to zero, and do another 25. But keep in mind, we are doing a totalizer. So now that we've hit 25, we hit the mode key again, we have a total of 50. And if I toggle back again to 25 and I clear that out, and let's say we get another 10, and we press the mode key, you notice the output light did not come on. However, but when I press the mode key, we're at 60. So it keeps a running count in the total. When in the mode of total, you can actually clear out your total number as well as your present value number. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to press the reset key here. I cleared that out. I go and I press the mode key again, we're back to zero. So this concludes the advanced setup of the H7CXN multifunctional counter. Any questions pertaining to Omron products, please visit omron247.com and or contact your local Omron distributor. Thank you and have a nice day.